Hello, I'm Frank Eaton. I'm the principal at Lang Elementary School and excited to share with all of the families of our students here at Lang some of the really cool things that are going on to start the 21-22 school year. Uh, first, I'd like just to welcome everybody back to a little more normal school year. Uh, it's really nice that we have our students all day this year when we had the stay in half day model uh, last year. Uh, we're able to do lunch again and some of the other things. Obviously, there are quite a few precautions and uh, protocols that we have to uh, to still engage in and, and make sure that we are keeping our students and our staff as safe as possible. Um, but uh, it's been a great start to the school year. So the rest of this video uh, is going to be a welcome from your child's uh, specific teacher. Uh, and then after that, each of our teachers here at Lang have created a video uh, to talk about something specific, uh, a different piece of curriculum or whatnot. Um, and uh, it will inform you just as, as far as uh, a lot of the different things that we're doing here at Lang. So uh, once again, welcome to our, our kindergartners for 21-22. Uh, excited to have this group. Uh, it's been fun already and look forward to the rest of the school year. Thank you. My name is Jane Lynch and I'm your child's kindergarten teacher. Tonight, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of background about myself and some information that pertains to our classroom in particular, and then feel free to click on the link so you can learn more about the kindergarten curriculum. As you know, um, my name is Jane Lynch and I have um, my bachelor's degree is from the University of Dayton in both elementary education with kindergarten, as well as special education. I also have my master's degree from the University of Dayton in early childhood transdisciplinary. My husband and I live in Oakwood with our four children, all who of which who go to Oakwood High School. I have a senior, twins who are sophomores, and a freshman this year. Our class has been busy, working hard, making new friends, working on language arts and math, practicing our fine motor skills, practicing our independent skills, learning how to be responsible for ourselves and our things. And it's been a great start to a school year. I wanted to touch base a little bit on independence and responsibility. Um, that's something we really work hard on at kindergarten. And things we do um, are cleaning up after ourselves, putting things in our mailboxes, as well as taking our folder and putting it in our backpack and putting our lunch boxes in our backpacks, all those kinds of things that help develop your child's independence. Things you can do to help your child are making sure everything they bring to school that they can take off, such as backpacks, lunch boxes, water bottles, coats, jackets, sweatshirts, sweaters, all those things, make sure you're labeling them with their names. We have plenty of um, duplicates of different uh, things that children bring to school, and it's super helpful when they um, their name is on things. Also, working with your child on zipping coats and tying shoes and putting folders into backpacks, making sure you can get your folder and your lunchbox into your backpack, opening containers at lunch, all those kinds of things are great ways to practice being independent at school. And of course, we're here to help, but part of your child's development is developing some of those independent skills, which is so exciting to watch. We're also working on being responsible by cleaning up after ourselves and being responsible by being good friends to our friends. So those are all things you can continue to encourage at home. I wanted to show you a couple of things um, that that your child will be bringing home in the next couple of or in the next week, a couple of weeks, we're going to be starting our SAR student program and your child will bring home a paper along with a um, bag attached to it. When it's your child's turn, you'll get you'll get a couple of days notice. And in there you will um, there's a letter that tells you all the things you need to send in, such as pictures of um <clears throat> of your child and their family and there's a surprise bag where you put something in the bag and then you write three clues and help your child practice reading the clues at home so that we can try to guess what is in the surprise bag and then there's a little chart for your child to fill out so we can get to know your children a little bit better um also you 
at a point this school year, we'll be sending home a um, bag that looks like this with readers for you to practice reading with your child at home. Please be sure to spend some time letting them read to you or you read to them or reading together. Um, those readers, that would be, that's a great way for them to show off what they've been doing at school. Sometimes your child will bring home other books that look like this that they have worked on, like maybe they've highlighted words or colored pictures. Those are for you to keep at home. So if it doesn't come home in this bag, then you can keep these at home. I do recommend putting them all in one place so your child can continue practicing reading those books and being a more confident reader um, throughout the year. Another way your child's gonna have access to information um, to access to leveled readers at their level is through RAS Kids, and I'll be sending home information about that so that they can practice reading books that are at their level um, on their Chromebooks. As you know, your Chromebooks have come home. Please use the information, the letter we sent with it, to see if you can log into your child's account and see if their Google Classroom, our Google Classroom, is waiting for them in the Google Classroom and there are an, there's an optional choice board if you're looking for activities for your child to do. Also be sure to sign up for your parent conference on the Sign Up Genius link that was sent home in a Friday message. Speaking of Friday messages, every Friday your message comes home um, via our message system. If you've not received any of these messages yet, please reach out to, my, to me so that I can figure out um, what we need to do to make sure that you are added. It was something you, when you signed up in your final forms that you had selected. So I'm sure we can figure out if you're not getting them, how we can get them to you. I hope, um, I hope you have a great evening and enjoy all the great information you're going to be getting throughout the evening. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out uh, to me at Lang School. And have a great evening. Thank you. Hi, Lang families. Um, my name is Erin Bourne, and I am a kindergarten teacher here at Lang. I am going to talk about handwriting and the program we use to um, help with our handwriting curriculum. So um, handwriting is when your child is working on learning the correct formation of numbers in capital letters and lowercase letters. We're also working on the orientation of the letter and the placement on the line. And we're working on building um, a strengthening our recall of those number or letters and numbers. So that way when your child's going to write and they're going to write a word and they're trying to produce a letter for a sound they hear, that way they've got it in their uh, working memory and they're able to produce that letter and write it down. And they don't have to take time to think about that, which can impede their writing. So it also um, helps develop their writing skills as well. The handwriting program that we use is um, Handwriting Without Tears, which is a program that I um, am a huge fan of. Um, so the picture on your screen right now is uh, the front of their handwriting, your child's handwriting book. So we call it our orange book a lot of times. Um, but the orange handwriting book has um, goes in a developmental order. So they have, we learn our capital letters first and then our lowercase letters. And we start with the easier letters, and that helps them gain confidence and master those skills. And then they um, introduce the uh, letters that are a little bit more challenging and help build on that prior knowledge of the skills that they've used on the other letters that we've learned. Um, so the handwriting book is not overwhelming and it's very manageable for kindergartners. Um, this is a picture of one of the pages in the handwriting book. So they're not asked to write the letter over and over and over again. It's just four times for each letter. And so they practice the correct formation, the placement on the line and the orientation. And um, it's also, this book is great for lefties as well. A lot of times um, if you're left-handed, you have to lift your hand or kind of 
turn your hand a certain way to see the model, but they've got models on the left and right so that no matter if your child's left-handed or right-handed, they're able to see a model of what the letter is um, that they're working on. So um, for handwriting, you will get a copy of this letter and in it, it also goes over the um, formation that we use to make our capital letters, lowercase letters, and our numbers. So we talk a lot and use the wording of lines and curves to make our letters and numbers. And so if I scroll down here, these are the capital letters. So it has the wording that we use when we're um, writing those. And then as well as the lowercase letters. And then the last part is the numbers. So um, the lowercase letters is when we'll start using two lines um, to help with the size of the letter and the placement on the line. Um, we're also working on pencil grip when we are working on handwriting. So um, a lot of times we are working on breaking those habits of holding pencils the different ways, um, but we are working on mainly two grips, the standard tripod grip with your index finger and thumb pinching the pencil and then your pencil rests on the middle finger and then as well as the quadrupod grip which involves the four fingers the thumb index and middle finger pinch it and then the um, pencil rests on the ring finger so we're working really hard on um, using those pencil grips not only will it help them become more fluid writers but it will also help make writing a lot more easier and um, help help them reduce that hand fatigue when they have to start writing more. Um, fine motor is another thing that we've been working a lot on in kindergarten, and we incorporate a lot of different fine motor activities into our day to help strengthen those fine motor muscles. So a lot of times, um, their little hands, their muscles aren't strong enough to sustain in a writing activity for a long period of time. So we work um, on different activities to help build and strengthen those muscles. Um, at school, we do a lot of cutting, um, even ripping paper, um, Play-Doh, playing with little um, objects at home. If you have any Legos or Lincoln Logs, any building things with the um, small pieces, um, stringing, um, beads or cereal onto a string or um, even any games that involve moving little pieces around help use those fine motor muscles and that will help help them gain strength um, and increase their stamina and writing as well. Hello Lang families. Um, my name is Erica Davis and I'm one of the teachers here at Lang. Um, I am here to talk to you about the phonics dance and writing as well. So um, to start off, the phonics dance is a great way that we learn our letters and our letter sounds. Um, we have these pictures posted in our classroom and um, there is a picture along with a letter and then there's a little chant uh, with some motions that we do with those chants. So this is a great way to connect um, our visual and auditory and kinesthetic learners um, because there's lots of different parts to the phonics dance. Um, so it's a great way for kids to make connections with those letter sounds. So I'm going to do a couple of them for you. Uh, this is the letter A, obviously. And here we see a picture of Abby. And Abby is clearly very, very sad. So our phonics dance for the letter A goes like this. A, A says ah. Ah, 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 Abby is sad. Ah, ah, ah is a wah. So uh, we do this. The kids really like getting into it and acting it out. Um, and it helps them make a connection to that letter A and the sound that it makes. Um, Another one that we do is the letter E. E is a tricky sound, um, but the motion that we do with the phonics dance really helps um, make that connection with the sound. So the letter E phonics dance goes like this. E, E says eh. Eddie loves his teddy and Eddie loves E. We make a little heart. So it's kind of like a choo-choo motion um, but 
since E is tricky, sometimes when kids can't remember what uh, the letter E sound is, I just do this motion and that clicks in their brain. Oh yeah, I remember this is the S sound. So a lot of them do make really great connections with emotions and with the sounds. So um, the phonics dance is a great resource. Um, most of you should have the little phonics dance book that they brought home. It's like a little half book. Um, they colored in the pictures. Um, we did these as we learned the different sounds. And it's a great resource if you haven't pitched it. It's a great resource um, for you to just go through the book and have your child practice those letter sounds. Um, and if they like to perform, to do the little chants that go along with them. Uh, when it comes to writing, of course, knowing our sounds and what the letters look like is super important. So um, a lot of the classes have a little phonics dance name tag. You could really have any um, alphabet in front of you is a great resource to use when you're just starting to teach writing. Um, so we've had a focus on listening for the beginning sounds and words right now. So we've done a lot of listening for initial sounds, um, labeling pictures. So um, let's say a child wants to draw a picture of a dog. So listening for that first sound, d, d. Now let's say they can hear the first sound and identify the d sound, but they forget, oh, I know d. D says D, but I don't remember what it looks like. So using an alphabet to go through, most of the kids come knowing how to say their ABCs. So we talk a lot about finding a letter using our ABC song and using one-to-one -one correspondence with our finger. So if I know D, D says D, but I'm not sure what it looks like, I can sing my alphabet, A, B, C, D. I found the D here. Um, so they could write down the letter using an alphabet resource. So we start with writing very simply, listening for the sounds and words. If they are ready, they might be ready to write the initial and the final sound. So if we're still working on that word dog, um, we would break out the sound D og. And if they hear the D and the G at the end, that's an awesome thing. The vowel sounds typically come a little bit later, but of course, eventually we want them to be writing all of those sounds that they hear. We've also um, started talking about the difference between letters, how we use letters to then build words, and how those words are eventually used to build sentences. So we're introducing the difference um, between all of those things, and we are going to be starting to write sentences more and more. So um, one way that we kind of show what a complete thought is, is uh, if we say, I see A, and the kids look and say, well, that doesn't really make any sense. So we say, that's not a complete thought. That would not be a sentence. But we have, I see a cat. Now you go, oh, okay, I know what that means. That's a complete thought. That is a sentence. So we're starting to write sentences. We start introducing um, that there have to be spaces between words. Um, as we introduce new sight words and things like that, those are added to our word wall, and kids are encouraged to use the resources around the room to help them write down their sounds. Um, one of the most important things that we want to tell parents is that um, kids learn to write through inventive spelling. And what that means is that um, we don't just tell children how to spell words. We want them to do their best to try to break out sounds and words and write down any sounds we know. So if you are ever writing at home with your child, if you want them to um, start a journal or uh, write a card to somebody, really encourage your child to write down the sounds that they know. So it's not going to be perfect, not everything is going to be spelled correctly, but you want to encourage them um, and you can help them even to break out sounds and words. Um, so if they want to write happy birthday, you could help them with happy. H -ap -e. What sound do you hear first? Um, 
you can have an alphabet in front of them so they can use that as a resource um, if they're not sure what those letters look like yet to write them down. Um, but we want to encourage parents to try not to just tell children how to spell words. So we really um, want to see them try their best and that's how they gain confidence too. So um, if you ever have any questions about the phonics dance or the writing process, please reach out to your teacher. Uh, I know writing is one of my favorite things in kindergarten because it's fun to try to decipher um, what they're writing, what they're trying to say. So um, I'm sure you will be uh, getting plenty of laughs when the kids uh, start bringing home their writing. I hope you all have a great day. And I know that all the classrooms are off to a great start in kindergarten. So thanks for all your support. Hello, my name is Mrs. Morrissey, and I am our intervention specialist here at Lang and our reading lab teacher. So I work with various students on reading, and I'm here to talk to you about guided reading today. Um, guided reading is an instructional approach where teachers work with students in small groups um, for reading. Uh, we work at their own individual level. So we have create, completed assessments where the student um, is leveled and they may be at the beginning of a kindergarten level, uh, middle, end of kindergarten, or even beyond. And we use these readers to complete small group instruction with the students. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different levels. This is a level this is the level A book. And the level A books are very repetitive. This is called My Bedroom. So we're working on the sight word my in this book and the sight word look. So the text may say, look at my bed. And you're going to keep going. Look at my bookshelf. Look at my books. This is where we get maybe a little trickier. Look at my, we're wanting them to um, remember the repetition in the book for look at my, and when we get to this last word, we're looking at the picture to see, someone might look in there and say toys, clothes, but this starts with cl, so we're wanting them to say closet. So if a child is having trouble, we will prompt them to look at the picture and the beginning sound. Same thing here. Look at my toys. Someone might say, look at my dolphin, look at my bear, look at my car. But we want them to look at the beginning sound of the word and see what makes sense based on the beginning sound. This is a level A text. So an important thing in level A text is pointing to the text because most kids can remember that pattern and just say, look at my bed, look at my toys, look at my closet, look at my, but we want them to look at each word. Look at my toys. So first we, we do the reading of the text. We reread it several times. We then do some work with the sight words. We might write on our dry erase board quickly in all four corners. Look, 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 or my, 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 my. And on that, we're having them copy that. Not write that how it sounds. We're having them copy that. We're trying to imprint the word my and look into their um, head. So that is a beginning level. Here we have a level D text. And... This is, this has more detailed uh, sight words. You can look here. You can see big buildings in the city. Some big buildings are called skyscrapers. And the first time you read, you might have to explain what a skyscraper is. Maybe that's not uh, the, a vocabulary word, so we'll talk about those. You can see parks in the city. There are cars and buses in the city. You can see parks in the city. There are trees in the parks. So again, um, on a level D, most kids already know the word you and can and see. We've covered those earlier. And we're now working on sight words like there. And um, some would be another sight word we'd be working on in this text. 
A couple things with guided reading. Building fluency is so important, and that's where the kids can read it more in phrases and not word by word. And we do that by repetition of reading. We read the same story multiple times. In any given guided reading lesson, we may read the story three times. Um, each lesson, I do a familiar text and a new text. So we've reread a familiar text that we've read. And then often, you'll see these books sent home to you to reread as well. That's one of the best things for fluency and also for comprehension. Comprehension is a huge part of guided reading because reading is not just recalling words. Reading is understanding the text and being able to make meaning from that text. So in order to do that, we need um, to ask questions about the text. We have the literal, the texts that have to do with the questions that have to do with the story, and then we have the um, beyond text questions where maybe we're comparing two stories or maybe we're asking them to infer. What do you think? Um, why do you think they did this? You know, how does this compare to another story we've read? Um, questions uh, like that. I'm going to talk to you a little more about sight words in general. In kindergarten, we have 45 sight words that the students are expected to know by the end of the year, within the text and in isolation when just shown a flashcard or something, or a list of all the sight words. Um, we kind of break the sight words down by month, and so some of the sight words we've worked a lot on, the first two we work on are A and I. They're a letter, but they're also a sight word. Um, we work on me, see, the, like, and and very early in the school year. So you may have seen a lot of books coming home with the word see in it. Again, those books are in the text. We do lots of repetition of that. Um, we also add them to our word wall. And a word wall is a resource in the classroom that the children can use when they want to write a word. So we don't want them just trying to sound out the sight words. Um, it's practice if they, if they use what we say, use your resources. So they can look at the word wall. And the word wall has other students' names on it. It also has words like I, A, C, me, the, we introduce those as we um, learn them and we put them up there. So whenever the children are writing the word the, they can go to the word wall and find the word the so that they can practice writing it T-H-E. These are words that you can't sound out easily. You just have to memorize. Um, for reading, as I mentioned in our guided reading books, they're seeing them over and over again in their books. And then at the end of the lessons or in the middle of the lessons, um, we may say things like after we've finished reading it and we've finished talking about it, we'll say, okay, everybody, we either say point to the word look and they'll find the word look on every page. Um, another thing we may say is frame the word look. And framing is when you put your fingers, <laughs> it's hard to do on the camera, put your finger next to um, one on each side of the the word. That's showing us that they can go through the text and discriminate the difference between look and my. So um, again, we have those 45 sight words. We work on a certain number of them each month. And if the kids are reading higher level books, um, D and above, they're getting new sight words um, throughout those books that they're reading as well. That's individualized to their need. Don't ever hesitate to read text beyond their level to them. It's so much fun to read um, great text to them that they can't read yet, but also to sit down and explore and watch how they are progressing in reading. You are going to be so impressed by what they can do by the end of the school year. And as always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Hi, parents and families. Uh, my name is Lauren Qualls, and I am a kindergarten teacher here at Lang. And I am excited to talk to you about one of our areas of curriculum called Hegarty. And this is a phon phonemic awareness curriculum that we practice daily in the classroom. So I'll tell you just a little bit about the overview of Hegarty. Like I said, it is a daily practice, and it does not have a written component. So it's something that is all done through spoken word, um, and it's designed to improve our students' reading, spelling, and writing skills so that as the students are learning to hear specific sounds in words. Uh, my experience, I've used this program for several years, and I am definitely thrilled with the progress that it has helped my students make. Um, so it's 
it's definitely a worthwhile practice and the great benefit is that it is also only a 10 to 12 minute part of our day, um, sometimes even shorter than that. So it is a very short part of our day that packs a huge punch into students' uh, language development. Their participation in this program is super important because as students are learning how to manipulate sounds and um, use them in their writing and reading, it's extra important that they are participating so that they can hear um, and notice the changes in those sounds. So I'll tell you a little bit more about what it looks and sounds like. There are 10 areas that we work on each day in that short time. Uh, so eight phonemic awareness activities that I'll chat about in just a second. And then daily let it, letter or sound practice. So we're doing flashcards with uh, letters and sounds. And there's also some sort of word or sentence, some sort of language um, activity that improves their language awareness. So oftentimes towards the end of the year, that looks like a, day, a weekly nursery rhyme. Uh, that they're practicing. So phonemic awareness activities include rhyming, um, identifying the parts of sounds in a word, changing or deleting parts, and blending as well. So I'll go through each of those little points and talk about an example so that you can kind of see what it sounds like in our classrooms as we're practicing phonemic awareness. So the rhyming we have in a couple different stages. At the beginning, we talk about what rhyming words are, and we provide some concrete examples. So students are repeating words like dog, log, or frog, or I guess that rhymes too, <laughs> frog, log. Um, so those are just some ways that we provide them with concrete examples of things that do rhyme. So once that skill is kind of covered, then we talk about is it a rhyming pair or is it not a rhyming pair? So I'll tell our students, give me a thumbs up if it rhymes, a thumbs down if it does not, and I'll say a word, you, we. Do those two rhyme? They don't, so we give a thumbs down. And then I'll provide another word pair, bag, tag. Those ones rhyme, so we give a thumbs up. So that's how we begin rhyming and transition to a different and more difficult part of rhyming. And finally, we do rhyming words where we provide one word and the children have to give us words that rhyme with that example word. So if I gave the word frog, then they would give me dog, log, bog, all those different words that rhyme with frog. So after we do that rhyming practice, we'll move on to identifying parts of a word. So at the beginning of the year, we're getting children to recognize the first sound of a word. So if I say the word mouse, they would say mouse, mmm, because there's an M at the beginning. And we never ask for the letter, we're always asking for the sound. So if a child is saying mouse, M, they've kind of skipped past that sound. We want them to just tell us that sound. So mouse, mmm, or top, t, that kind of thing. So that's the beginning of words that we identify. We also do some fun practice to identify an ending sound next. So beginning sounds, and then we cover ending sounds. And to do that, we often have the children punch it up, such as this. If I were to say the word ball, I would say ball, ball, oh, and I'm looking for that ending sound of the word when I punch it up. We also talk about the middle sound of a word, and that middle sound we like to, I like to do a little roller coaster with. So with the word top, I would go t, a, p. So students are able to isolate each of the sounds in a word. So we make it fun and it keeps children engaged um, so that we can get that great language awareness practice in. Um, we also practice adding and deleting and changing parts of a word. So at the beginning of the year, this looks like taking apart compound words, such as the word snowman. If I say snowman, take away snow, what part of the word is left? Man. Likewise, if I want them to change a part of a word, if I give them the word snowman, change snow to male, and they have to think of what that new word would be. The new word is mailman. So that just gets their uh, brain activated for that language awareness activity of substituting parts of a word because later in the year we do that with sounds. So if I said the word lip, take away ol, they would have to recognize that the ending two sounds are ip. Where if I have them say lip, take away p, then they, that one's a little bit harder, they say li and leave off that ending sound. Um, so those are a great foundation to when we eventually begin blending. Uh, so if we were to blend that word lip, it would sound like ol, ip, 
lip. So then they are able to better uh, incorporate that into their writing. Um, like, like I said, we are doing this right now with compound words at the beginning of the year. So students take apart and put together words such as the word inside. Inside, inside. Or they take it apart. Inside, inside. So it is a quick, like I said, practice that we blow through each day. Uh, but it is really important to our development here in kindergarten. Um, like I mentioned before, it does really improve writing and reading skills as we do this uh, vocal activity each day. Um, it familiarizes students with that action of breaking apart, changing, and manipulating words and putting them back together based on the sounds that they hear. Um, and the group of skills that we cover in phonemic awareness are hugely contributing to reading success as students go throughout uh, their early years of school. So I included a writing example here that kind of shows what we're, what these skills are helping us to achieve here in the early stages of kindergarten. So this child tried to draw a, they drew a bear, and then they wanted to write that word next to it. So you can see that they got two sounds there. They got the beginning b and the ending er sound. That is a really great example of how Hegarty is able to incorporate into our writing because if the students are kind of lost on where to begin with writing, then we can say, okay, your word is bear, first sound, and they know first sound, b, b, okay, I can write that. And then they can punch it up to get that last sound, their word is bear, so we go bear, -er -er. And they've got two sounds already. So that's a really great start for a kindergarten writer um, and something that we want to praise and acknowledge as an important step in their writing. Um, that is everything uh, information-wise on Hegarty from me. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. If you have any questions about this Hegarty curriculum, be sure to reach out to your child's teacher and they can give you some more information. Thanks so much. My name is Jane Lynch and I'm one of the kindergarten teachers at Lang School. This evening I'm going to talk with you about math and math in kindergarten. I'm excited to get to talk about this. Math has always been my very favorite subject, so it's exciting I get to talk to you about it. In kindergarten and math, we cover many different strands of mathematics and we will be counting uh, by ones and by tens to 100. We'll be looking at sets of objects and comparing them using vocabulary, vocabulary such as more, less, greater than, less than, least, the same, equal to, all those different kinds of vocabulary words. We'll be working on reading as well as writing numbers from 0 to 20. And we'll also be working on starting at different numbers besides 1 to count. So maybe you know, they might have to start at three and count to 10, or start at seven and count to 30. So with that showing the children that you don't always have to start at one to count, you can start anywhere in numbers and, and you can continue to count. We'll be working on the operations of addition and subtraction. We'll talk about the concept of addition and subtraction. We're adding, we're putting things together and subtracting, we're taking things apart or taking things away. We'll be providing lots of tools um, to help your children with this, such as manipulatives, you know, like manipulatives like chips or things to help them add things together and take things apart using our number lines, using the hundreds grid, um, drawing pictures, making tallies, learning how to count on, all those different things to help with addition and subtraction. We'll be learning ways to make 10 where we know this is a tens frame. And so anytime this is filled up, it's 10. So we'll talk a lot about how, okay, well, if there are seven right here and we put three more in, then we have it filled. So now we know seven plus three more is the same as 10 or is equal to 10. Um, we also will be playing lots of dice game. Dice are a great way to be automatic with your um, with numbers and with adding numbers together. And so we play lots and lots of dice game. One more area of operate, one more part of operations that we work on is being able to fluently add within five. So being able to look and say one plus three is the same as four or is equal to four. 
or four, take away one is three, where it's automatic for them. They don't need the tools to just know that. So we'll do a lot of practice with that. Uh, we'll work on base 10 with teen numbers. Teen numbers are the tricky ones uh, for, the, for the boys and girls, first of all, to learn. Just the names of them, those are tricky because there's not a great pattern for teen numbers. Like there are other numbers. However, we'll also talk about how teen numbers are a group of 10 plus ones. So one group of 10 plus some ones is to make different teen numbers. And this is a great way to introduce our place value system. We'll talk about measurement and data by comparing attributes of different things like such as weight and length and height and using terms like more and less, greater than, longer, shorter. And in geometry, we'll talk about both 2D and 3D shapes. Uh, being able to use the vocabulary that goes along with 2 and 3D shapes and being able to identify and describe them as well as compare and, you know, take shapes apart to make different shapes. So if you take a square and you draw a diagonal line, well, now you have two triangles. So we now know two triangles put together can make a square. Um, all of us work in our classrooms every day on our calendar activities, and the calendar is a great has, it's just filled with math. We do a lot of place value because we count how many days we've been in kindergarten. We talk about the days of the week and the concepts of time. We're always counting on. Uh, so our calendar activities just lend themselves easily to math. And we also will be working on word problems, both orally and drawing them out with pictures and objects. So be on the, um, so that's a great thing to do in the car. You know, like, oh, I see two houses. If there are two more houses, how many houses do you have all together to just do those kind of oral math problems? So in kindergarten, math is very hands-on. We use lots of manipulatives. We play games. We do activities. We do paper pencil with it as well. But we try to make it hands-on as well so that it can be as concrete and so children can really understand the concepts behind all the areas we're working on in math. Hi Lang families, I'm Jody Anderson, one of the kindergarten teachers here at Lang, and I'm going to be talking to you about what your child will be learning in science and in social studies this year. Now we paired those two together because many of the topics that the students will learn in science and social studies are embedded within the stories that we read and the themes and activities that we plan. Um, so while you may not have a science worksheet or activity that you see come home, do know that we are having many, many discussions here at, at school about science and social studies topics that kindergartners are required to learn. Um, I just wanted to touch on, though, a few of the, the power standards, the Ohio learning standards that we do cover in kindergarten so that you could know what to expect this school year. Um, with science, the big overarching concept is that scientists use their five senses to observe and to compare and to have conversations about what's happening in the world around us. Um, with science, we will observe all of the seasonal changes, the weather changes, and also some things that are happening in the world around us as those seasonal changes happen. Um, this allows us to really know that scientists just take a step back and observe what's happening. And we can use those five senses by seeing, smelling in some cases, feeling, touching, tasting, hearing, all of those things that, that we can um, use our five senses to explore. Um, also, we will be learning about living and non-living things, the differences between living and non-living things. And we'll be exploring animal habitats at the same time while we're doing that and how animals need habitats to help them survive. Um, in the spring, we'll talk about sound and that sound is actually created through vibration. And that is just another one of those Ohio learning standards that are covered in kindergarten as a springboard for what your children will learn in the future. Um, moving on to social studies, I would say, like I mentioned with science, that the bigger, higher, um, the arc of what they were learning in, in, in science was observing and using our five senses to see the world around us. 
With social studies, I would say that the bigger um, learning topic of the year is how time passes. And this is why we use the calendar that you can see behind me um, to talk about the days of the week, the months of the year, and also, like I mentioned before, it connects to science with how the seasons and um, the weather changes. So with the calendar, kids need to know that yesterday, today, and tomorrow are, are different time and that past is something that happened in the past and future is something that will happen. Um, as we talk about the calendar, we also will explore different traditions and, and customs as we see the holidays that pop up on our calendar. We use those holidays as ways to discuss what our families um, do at our homes for traditions, because every family has their own customs and their own traditions. And the children will be able to share what their families do at home as each holiday approaches on the calendar. Another thing we do with social studies is we learn about American symbols that we should recognize as Americans. For example, a simple one is the American flag. We want to be sure that all kindergartners in Ohio recognize some main major American symbols like the American flag, um, the Pledge of Allegiance, the national anthem. Now they don't need to be able to sing the national anthem, but we want them to recognize these things as symbols of America. Um, it, another thing that we'll do towards the end of the school year is learn about maps. And we try to start with like, with the, the connection that kids can make with a map of their own bedroom. So we teach them that a map is really just a drawing of a place or a location. And, and by starting out with something that makes sense to them, we then can go a little bit larger and dig a little deeper um, with showing them the map of the United States. And, and doing some enrichment with some things that, that some kids may not be ready to learn, but while others are ready to learn, it's fun to look at that map of the United States and try to find states that you might recognize. Um, one other thing that happens in social studies, but again, it happens throughout the school year in our discussions, is where we just talk about social interactions and appropriate social interactions. So all of the teachers here at Lang try to teach respect, and kindness and acceptance and everything that we do and everything that we expect the children, um, how they we expect the children to um, treat their friends with respect and kindness and acceptance. But again, that just is embedded within what we do each day. So hopefully you will enjoy seeing your young learners um, make some progress this school year with science and social studies. Thank you for joining us. Hope you have a great year. Thank you for watching our video. We hope that it's been informative, has answered some questions that you may have had, and can lead to some positive discussion with your children in the near future. Also, I wanted to say thank you for all of the support that our families provide. I'm always blown away by how supportive our Oakwood families are of our schools and of their students. Thank you and hope the school year continues to go great.